Hi all, welcome to another filters challenge here at Hummies World. Today we're going to be working with a glowing edges filter and here's a layout I just made with this um, while I was playing around before the video and I kind of had fun with it. And before we uh, look at it though, I want to show you this layout that I did um, way back in 2007 when I first uh, did this challenge for myself. Um, I really like uh, the effect that I got here. I uh, did a lot of playing. I remember that um, I couldn't get it to look right for their heads and so I thought, well, <coughs> let's just enlarge the photo and chop off their heads and I went wow that looks pretty cool like that and uh, this is actually kind of one of my favorite layouts I really liked how it turned out gave me a perfect spot to put the the title and the text um, you'll see up here I journaled uh, what I did the steps and I said but are not limited to uh, running the filter and placing it above an original layer of the photos, applying a shadow adjustment, applying a blending mode to the top layer, merging the two layers, extracting the boys from the photo, and putting the same paper layer of, over and below the extraction, and then lowering the op opacity to the upper paper layer. Yeah, I don't know exactly what I did. I played. <laughs> and that's what you need to do with these um, filter challenges too. You need to play and get that artistic high um, out of uh, your playing and uh, come up with something uh, fun. Um, here's the one I just did and uh, I applied uh, some techniques to the background photo. Uh, before we do it, let's look at my original photo here. I put one on the top layer for me to play with. Uh, my silly husband jumping on this very huge, I mean this is a, only a small part of it, uh, air thing. He took no time at all to get out there and uh, play. Um, this filter uh, works much like the finding edge uh, filter. In fact, let me uh, duplicate this several times so we can we can play around. Let's um, we'll, we'll do the the finding edge for another um, lesson, obviously. But uh, let's go ahead and run it. Uh, just so you can see what it looks like and you see it runs real fast and there's no options to it so let's turn that one off and um, go to open up the glowing edges and in this stylized set the glowing edges is the only one that opens up the filter gallery <coughs> Oh, we've gone to not responding. A little too much RAM going on here. There we go. That wasn't too long. And we immediately see um, what this does. It's very similar to the finding edge where it looks for where the colors um, change and um, looks for the amount of brightness between the pixels. Um, and then creates edges and lines and uh, it really is kind of uh, 1970s psychedelic <laughs> but you can really take this and do a lot of fun things with it as it is right here it doesn't look very useful the difference between the finding edges is one it well I'll show you that number one in a minute but two you do get some options with this and I think the default is way down here somewhere you can see what the default does but you can uh, do the edge width and make it a lot wider so there are some options with this you can make the edge very bright and you can change the smoothness of the edge so I'm going to go ahead though to show you the difference, number one, by lowering these down to about the default level and clicking OK. And here we have the finding edge 
and here we have the glowing edge. And you're going to see that this um, is basically black with some colors on it. And this is basically white with some colors on it. So the main difference is um, that these are basically inverted. So if I click on this layer here and I click Control I, what do you get? You get the same thing that you get here. So um, the big difference is one, it's inverted, and two, it opens up the filter gallery so you have those sliders and those options in order to play. So let's get rid of this uh, finding edge one and let's get rid of this one. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to duplicate this again. And in the middle one, go ahead and go down to stylize, glowing edges. And I'm going to fit it to screen, which I wish it would come up with that as a default. And I'm going to change this because I, li I want the wider width and I want, uh, nah, I don't want too wide a width. There we go. I want something a little bit more stark is what I'm going for than, than the basic. And I'm going to click OK and apply that. There's really no science to it. Um, now uh, I'm going to duplicate this and tuck one of them away because just because we're playing. So I'm going to take this and you can, uh, you see I got the original below it. You can start applying the blending modes. Let's see what they do. And uh, you can, you're just going to, you can see it doesn't do too well on faces. But um, just start applying blending modes to see what you get. Now see that kind of looks too much like the original. I don't really like it. Uh, there's, what about uh, soft light? See, there's what soft light does. And um, let's see what color does. That's interesting. Pin light. So you just begin playing with some of these. Um, you might want to try going up to run the blur, Gaussian blur, a little bit. Oh, wow. See, look what that did. <laughs> And this comes up with yet a whole nother um, set of effects that kind of, uh, I think if you do overlay, it even kind of, maybe not overlay, soft light, kind of just even softens it. There's the before and there's the after and of course brings out the colors. Um, but remember you can also play with these and uh, Ooh, there's dreamy like he's in the clouds and lower the <laughs> opacity too. Okay, so you can get all sorts of things with these. I'm going to turn that one off. Let's turn this second one on that I saved for us to play. Um, another suggestion is to once you get these edges is to um, uh, take the color out. And I'm just going to do a very basic. You, you know I have other tutorials about removing color. And so we've removed the color and then try some of the blending modes. I think, um, I don't remember which one I did. Now well, let's look. So let's go see what I did before. Um, with this one here I used the multiply and this one here I used the color dodge. So let's go back up and use the multiply on this one. Actually, if I go back down here, it looks like I inverted it. See, I don't even remember how I got where I got before. Um, so let's do control I on that layer and invert it. And look what we got. That already is uh, pretty cool. I used um, that inverted with the multiply layer and I got this cool um, kind of almost uh, cartoonish um, look and uh, then I've got one 
original one, not with any um, uh, a filter applied. And I'm going to apply the, I think color dodge was what I had. And um, now you can see this is even a whole nother effect and I like this kind of glow on here. Um, but I'm going to show you what I did to arrive at what I got before. I began playing with the brushes and I went and got some dry media brushes. And I think I did this soft oil and I, you know, you can get any brush you want. Press D on the keyboard so I got black here. And then I just began painting right on this image here. See, I got it. It's multiply. Oh, here. Well, it's coming in down here. You can see how it's making this grungy look down in here. You can see it. Zoom in. You see, it's almost like water. It might be a cool effect on water. And actually, I know what's happening is my brush opacity is way too low. Let's bring it up. Oh, there. Now see when I'm hitting the sky, I have my brush opacity at about 60%, 62. And you can go through here and, ooh, look at that color I'm bringing out. And uh, I can put it on white. Ah! I think that's why I have my brush opacity way down. Click on white and maybe do some of that lighten up this. I didn't like it when I did it on his face, um, so I had left that alone. And, and anyway, wherever you paint uh, black and white on here, you're going to see that looks, well, it's blending with the stuff below. You're going to see this, if you look at it alone, it looks really funny um, with all the black and the white on it, but why it's working is um, that the black and the white are uh, blending with the layers below. Um, because of the color dodge and the rest of it is that that's not being hit with the grungy brush because you know the there's parts of the brush that um, are leaving the photo alone they are um, being left as they are anyway so that's what I did in order to get this here so um, you know, play. Just play. <laughs> Grab your brushes and play. Uh, don't limit yourself to uh, just blending modes and uh, opacities. And uh, really, just have fun.